Good to be with you again. Though it's the third Sunday in ordinary time, it's also the week of prayer for Christian unity. A very beautiful time set aside officially by the Catholic Church, by the World Council of Churches, and in turn, many of the churches throughout the world observe during this time a, a moment of prayer for each other, a prayer for better cooperation, a deeper sense of unity. And that unity is very real already uh, in, in a very interesting way, though we're aware of the divisions and the differences of how different Christian churches do many different things. There are some very important basic points that all of them in a very real way accept and are reunited on. I mean, on one basic, very basic fact, whether you are a Catholic or a Protestant or an Orthodox, your life is modeled on the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, because of our baptism in water and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have a bond of unity already among ourselves. As I said, sometimes it's not too evident. Sometimes, sadly, there are certain uh, evangelical Christians who have been uh, very, very uh, quick to taunt and say, you Catholics really aren't Christians, which is really very, very unfair because we are Christians. And in a very real way, because they're Christians, they are our brothers and sisters as well. The, the Catholic Church teaches that if one is baptized in water, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one is a member of the body of Christ. Though divided, yet not the fullness of unity, that we as Catholics believe God has given us through Jesus Christ and through the teaching of the apostles. And yet we are members of the body of Christ and we deserve respect from each other and affection that we are members of Christ's body. Another element that's very important, again, it sometimes seems to be a divisive element, but in truth, it's a really a binding element and it's the Holy Scriptures and the reverence for the Holy Scriptures. Catholics are well aware that though the Mass and the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ are important, that that body and blood of Christ begins with the celebration of the at the table of the word, as we call it beautifully in the Catholic Church, the table of the word before we go to the table of the Eucharist. Because it is in sharing the word of God that we even know about the Eucharist. The Eucharist only comes to us through the Holy Scriptures and the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And isn't it true that many of the, the prayers and phrases we use in the Mass are from the Scriptures? That's why that beautiful reading uh, today from the book of Nehemiah, uh, the, the reading of the law uh, by Ezra to the people, how they, they were engaged in listening attentively, like we should be at, the, at, the, at, at Sunday Mass in the Word of God. And then the preaching of the priest, again, this is another element that we share in common with our Christian brothers and sisters uh, of all the forms of Christianity that they, they hear the word of God, then it's preached to them. Uh, and thankfully, thankfully, more and more numbers come together at the table of the Lord. Uh, our, 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 our Eastern Orthodox brothers and sisters, uh, that's not a question. They understand that you really have to have the word of God and the holy table, the Eucharistic table, uh, as one uh, celebration of the service. Many of our Protestant brothers and sisters have come to that conclusion, are, are more and more readily every Sunday having not only preaching and prayer and, and the reading of, the, of scriptures and the gospel, but also celebrating the table of the Lord, the body and blood of Christ. We are members of one body of the Lord. Uh, that other reading for this, this Sunday is so beautiful. Uh, he describes, St. Paul does, that as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also in Christ. 
For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, and we drink of one spirit. Now the, now the body is not a single part. The foot can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Uh, the ear can't say, uh, I, I, I don't need the rest of you. We need every part of the body. And in a very real way, the sad thing is we need every Christian in the world. Every Christian in the world already has a spirit in him and, and, or her and is doing something for the Lord. If we would only be more and more united in our love for each other, our working together, our understanding of each other as one body of Christ, what a marvelous witness would go out to the world of what these Christians believe. That's what's so sad. They see too many times, the world sees, the, the two-thirds of the world is not Christian, sees this one-third of the world, us, Catholics, Orthodox, and Protestants, sometimes squabbling with each other. And they say, how can they, how can they be a, the religion of this Jesus of Nazareth who says he brings peace to the world? So pray for Christian unity. Let us work hard, love our neighbors, love our friends, and respect all those who cherish the name Christian. Have a good week now.